Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bull Prospecting. I got it right this time. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm torn. I don't know which one I want to process. So I got this bag here of uh, these guys. You know, they're pretty thick. Um, you know, they're decent. A lot of them are real old school. And I got, a, I'd say a couple pounds there. Then I got these uh, BGAs, but they're the copper heat sinks. And, you know, you know, the recovery still be pretty good, but not as good as if they were the solid BGAs. So, you know, I don't know which ones I want to process. And then I got my SMCs. You know, that's probably a couple pound bag. You know, what's this one? Actually, I got one pound, six ounces of this. <clears throat> There's actually a little more in there. And what do I got? And I got, a, oh, I didn't weigh this one, did I? Nope. Rootin' tootin'. I didn't. That's all right. So, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and process these guys. And uh, what I'll do is I'll separate the backs from them. And we'll weigh it up and, you know, see what we can get out of these guys. Just, I got a, basically a almost a full sandwich bag full. Just basically kind of see what we got there. About that thick. You know, feels pretty heavy. A lot of that's copper and plastic. Um, we're not gonna get our hopes up, like the like I said. You know, it's, you know, it's, it don't get me wrong. They're still good, but uh, they're not as as good as the ones without the copper heat sink. So let's uh, start processing these bad boys. Okay, I'm gonna try to record this the best I can. Hopefully the scale don't turn off if the cord's messed up. I'm trying to be nice and gentle. Let's see here. Okay. Looks like we got nine ounce, nine point three ounces of the copper heat sink. Ball array BGAs 9.3 ounces. Okay, time to get busy. Okay, so here's our material after incineration. You can see everything's all nice and burnt up, except for that one piece of chip right there that's driving me nuts. I'll get him, and then uh, we'll go ahead and we'll go to the next step, which is washing all this ash away. Okay, after incineration, I like to bring them to a slow simmer and then add just a touch of garlic. No, I'm like it. <laughs> no, but uh, after I incinerate them, I just uh, add a little bit of water, rinse them, and then put them back in there to dry them out um, because I think that helps oxidize the metals that have to come out, it, uh, come out of it in the next step. So that's just what I do. Um, everybody's different. So uh, we're going to let this dry off, and then we're going to crunch it all up. Okay, guys, we're all dried out. Now, what I got here is a steel ball. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll that son of a gun around. Let me see if I can demonstrate it. Um, bear with me here. I'm going to see if I can set this up and show you how I do it. So now I just take that ball. And I just go ahead and do one of these. always do one of these too. Spread it out. Alright guys, we're going to finish brushing this up. Now we got to screen it to get out all the big stuff we don't want. We're going to use this classifier right here to do that. So I'm going to get to classifying. We're going to classify this and then when we're done, we'll take the powder and get busy with it. Okay, so we've liberated 
all the big copper heat sinks and there is our material so we got to wash the ash off of this and then go ahead and start our next step well guys she's boiling and I added just a little sulfuric acid to uh, delete any silver so when it's all said and done the only thing that should be left behind is pure gold sediment so we're gonna let this thing do its deal and uh, we'll be melting the gold chunk Okay guys, it's just about ready. It's stopping to produce, you know, stopping to produce the gas. You want to stop seeing the red. When you stop seeing the red, then you know it's all ready to go. So we're going to leave this a couple more minutes and then we're going to start filtration. Okay guys, uh, you can see the it's now cooled down. I did throw a couple ice cubes in there to cool it off. Now it's on to filtration. What I do is I like to put a piece of cotton in the middle and then a coffee filter. And that, that seems to work for me. But, uh, you know, if you can get a, a vacuum flask, that's the way to go. So now let's go ahead and start filtering this and see how it looks. Okay, guys. Here's our solution filtering out. You can see there's some green in there, but that's okay. It's not going to affect anything when we precipitate the gold out. And this is our sludge. Um, basically, we just got to keep rinsing this off till there's no more color and get it through our filter and then start our precipitation. But you can see this is why I need to get a vacuum flask because uh, this is going to take some time. So we'll let this do its thing and we'll start precipitation. Okay guys, here's uh, the solution after I uh, filtered it out. Now it's time to denox it and neutralize the acid. I'll show you what the uh, filter looks like. This is the filter. I sprayed it one more time just to get any loose gold sediments uh, that may be hanging on. And I sprayed it out real good. And you can see that's just the leftover stuff, but we got no more yellow dripping out through here. There's no more yellow dripping out. That means all the gold is in solution. So now let's go to the very next step. Okay, guys, the next step is we need to neutralize the acid, the leftover acid that's in here so that we can get the gold out using sodium metabisulfate. So I'm going to go ahead and add some urea, some urea uh, pieces. We're going to add it slowly because it's good. We don't want it to foam up too quick. Now what we're going to do, we're going to stir this around, and what we should start to we should start to see some foam happening on top here. So we're going to keep stirring this until all those little crystals dissolve. You want to make sure you don't see any more of the little urea flakes coming about. Okay, so I'm going to keep stirring this. And then once all the urea has dissolved, we will go to the next step. We'll put some more urea in. 
And you can see it's finally starting to react. Right now it's neutralizing the acid. Oh, come on, dude. Well, all right, we saved uh, that fly, that moth. So let me just keep stirring this until all that urea dissolves. We want to start seeing some bubbles on the top of here before we put in our sodium metabisulfate. Okay, so after I uh, denoxed it, now I'm filtering it one more time, and then we're gonna precipitate our gold out of solution. And I'm using the same filter because uh, it seems to work a lot better when you use the same filter. And we're gonna see if this uh, turns to a more yellow color um, on the second run. So, let's we'll see. Okay guys, so after we denoxed, the solution it's all nice and filtered you can see there's the filter we cleaned up all that sediment out there and I also have a cotton filter underneath that is a secondary and so now what we're gonna do we're gonna pour this into the big uh, 2,000 milliliter beaker and start our precipitation okay guys now we're gonna precipitate this out of solution with sodium metabite sulfate which is just your plain old stump out so let's go ahead and do this step and what i'm going to do is put this in there and then i'll tune back in because i'm not going to be able to record this but basically what i'm going to do is take some spoons of this put it in here stir it around and then all the gold will attach and fall out of this um, liquid into the bottom in a solid and uh, so i'm going to do that and then i'll show you guys what it looks like when it's stirring around in there I've added the sodium metabite sulfate, and you can see it's starting to change color, turning black. And now all we gotta do is let it set. So I'm gonna leave this for overnight, and then tomorrow, hopefully we'll be melting a nice little chunk. I'm not sure how much we'll get, but we'll find out. Okay guys, it's the next day. Everything is settled to the bottom. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this little tube I got here to go ahead and siphon this off into the bucket so uh, I don't disturb any of the the gold at the bottom so let's uh, siphon this off and get our precious metal all right guys there's our gold Let me zoom in on that it's a uh, no huge stellar recovery but you got to remember we only had eight ounces of chips so we're going to melt this down and, and see what we got. Um, I'm thinking 0 0.3, 0 0.4. But uh, let's melt it down and find out. I'm going to add a little bit of sodium carbonate to this, which is uh, just baking soda, um, to help oxidize and kind of speed up the melting process. And uh, let's see what we can do. Time to melt her down. Just goes to show you how micro fine gold can be. And that's all gold right there. And this is something to remember when you're out in nature and you're looking for gold, you know, gold's not always gold. Gold can be in, in microscopic form and be brown and gray and all these different colors. So there could be all kinds of gold out there that people have just been walking by for years and years and years. Okay, so let's go ahead and melt this bad boy down.
Okay, guys, there it is. Now let's see how much it weighs. My dog Ginger, she's going nuts because she wants to see what it looks like. Okay, guys, now let's see how much it weighs. One point five grams. That's not bad. One point five grams out of eight ounces. That's stellar, dude. All right, that was eight ounces of material. We got one point five grams of pure twenty-four karat gold out of eight ounces of material. That's huge. Yeah, look at that thing. Oh, that thing, amazing looking. Yeah, buddy, look at that. Man, that thing is like the butter. Oh, man. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And hopefully we can be opening up the mine soon and showing you guys some cool, cool stuff. Thanks for tuning in, and hopefully we'll see you on the next one.